Hi guys, we're coming to you from Kenrich Products, uh, where we build the Kenrich Grout Pumps. Manufactured just below, assemble, build here, and ship out, all from the same location in the Great Pacific Northwest, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the changing out of your repair kit. If it's uh, your GP2 or GP1, there will not be a video for the one because it's a repeat of what we're doing here today. Whether you have plastic or metal pump body, they're both going to be the same procedure, nothing different. So now we're going to go through the procedure. There's three tools you'll need for this, real simple. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, 5 16 nut driver, and a flathead screwdriver. Used for taking out these 10 slot headed screws, for the sake of time, I've already taken them out. You drop all 10 screws in your clamp ring, take the top off, this is the top housing pump body, here's your, dive, uh, your diaphragm, slot headed screw, there's a truss head screw that you're going to break loose, get that out of there, again don't lose these parts, slot headed screw, you're going to have plastic button, metal washer, here's your diaphragm. Diaphragm's no good. You got another plastic button and another washer. It's very important to put these back on the same way they came off. So this is where we're going to show you. Metal washer first, plastic button, your new diaphragm, and you want to make sure that you push your diaphragm over the boss of that clevis pin. Plastic button facing up, stainless steel washer on top, and your truss head screw and make sure you don't strip it because if you do you're in trouble and all you want to do is screw that in and tighten that snug all right so to take your plastic pump body off from the hose as we to change your flapper valve for the sake of time i've already taken off three of the four one inch cap screws that hold the pump body to the baseboard you will have to remove those so you take all four out you got a lock washer, one inch cap screw, flat washer, and your nut. And this is where the 7 16 wrench comes in so you can loosen those up. If you want, a little trick of the trade is you take your flathead screwdriver, you hold your nut head, your cap screw head to get it off. And then from there, you can go ahead and take off your pump body to replace your flapper valves. Take a time again, I took the nuts off which you'll want to do on the field with your flathead screwdriver. There's six in the front, six in the rear. Drop your screws. Don't lose your hardware. Here's your flapper valve. This is the front, which is the outlet flange. This is what it looks like when it comes out. This is very important to pay attention to because if you put it back in backwards or the hinge upside down, either way it won't work it's got to go in one way to make the pump work right and this is the biggest mistake that's made so this is the front and then this is the rear which would be the inlet flange this is the one that goes inside the tube same thing for the sake of time I took off all the screws and nuts so you want to make sure you pull them all out this is what it's going to sit like when you take it out it's old theoretically you want to make sure your new one will go back in the same way. So you've taken your old one out, then you grab your new one, and it goes back in with the bold, bulge part of the flange, and that little tit needs to go face in. So this is the way it goes back on. So inlet flange, make sure it goes this direction. Okay, so without the inlet flange on there, that's what it's going to look like. Okay. And then repeat putting your slot headed screws with your nuts. You're going to tighten them down kind of like a car tire. You're going to go kitty corner. That way you're seating it correctly. You're not bounding it up on one side and working your way around. Alrighty, so we changed our flapper valves. And uh, again, not to repeat myself, but it's very important that these flapper valves go in the correct way in the correct direction. How do you chest that? So we just changed it. Before you put everything back together, simply reach in on the outlet flange. So the pump's gonna sit like so. On the outlet flange, you can put your finger in there and you can feel that little tit that was on that bulge. You should be able to put your finger in there, catch that and flick it and that should snap back. That's the proper way. 
the, out, the inlet flange, which is the back of the pump, you should be able to stick your finger in, not this way, but inside the pump body and do the same thing. The reason you're doing it in the pump body here versus here is because the direction of flow is going the same way. So the easiest way to remember is one, the hinge should be on the top as we discussed earlier. That's this hinged part needs to be on top at all times. And the orientation or the rotate of the uh, direction, excuse me, of the flapper valves are all going, both are going the same way. Feel that? You feel that? You did it right. If you can't feel the tit, it's on the back side or it's on the wrong side here, you gotta flip it around. So going back to this, when you're gonna go back and mount it, you gotta remember your puck. That's another thing that guys forget and you have issues. Put the puck on, make sure it's flat. Just slide this back into the hose. You wiggle it to go back in. You have your four one inch cap screws. Simply put those in the holes, washer, nut, tighten them. All you need to tighten them down is your 7 16 wrench and your screwdriver. And that is, if you put your flat to the screwdriver, that'll help bind it up so you can tighten it up. So after you've tightened all your cap screws down, you wanna come back over to this clamp and just use your nut driver, tighten that up. And again, you just want it nice and snug. You don't wanna over tighten, you don't need to. From there, you take your top of your pump body which would be the diaphragm which we replaced earlier make sure that goes on top and the important thing is too is on these you see there's a gasket bead type of uh, rim on the diaphragm that needs to sit inside this trough which it will there you go simple as that handle faces out you cannot do it the wrong way because the handle won't reach it'll hit the hopper sit that down in there take your your slot headed screws you got 10 of them put them in there take your nuts that you took off originally put those back on again your tire changing orientation you're going crisscross one here one here one here so forth and so on you don't want to tighten one side then the other because you'll see that cro crooked and it'll give you a headache all right, so we went through the procedure, or the way to change out your repair kit for your Kenrich GP1 and GP2. Again, we didn't have the GP1, but it's a repeat, identical, same way. Um, this is the pump, it's all back together. S screws, nuts, flappers, I mean, diaphragm, everything's done, everything went back the same way it came off. This is the repair kit, what it consists of. You have your diaphragm, your two flapper valves, and you'll get instructions as well. When you receive them in the mail, this is the way they'll come. In a bag, this unit in here with instructions as well, but the video is just as good. So, another quick tidbit, if you end up stripping out your screws, losing them, you wanna replace any kind of your hardware, we have something called a screw bushing kit for the Kenrich pumps GP1 and GP2. We have them for all our pumps, which we'll go into later on in other videos. This is the screw bushing kit that you get. It's the complete bushings for the three locations here in the handle and clevis and all your hardware. So not to panic, call us. We can get this shipped out to you as well. That's a screw bushing kit. Okay, so we put our repair kit in, brand new. Everything should be run perfect. The way to test this is very simple before you fill it with grout and get it back on the job. And that is simply taking the palm of your hand, putting it over the outlet flange like so, and start pumping. You'll hear the air coming out and you'll also feel it. That simulates grout. What that tells me is everything was put in correctly. Thank you for watching our Kenrich grout pump repair kit change out video and again we're going to have a GP3A video and a GP6 and 7 to follow and some other little things that would uh, help you with the uh, use of your pump and again uh, we thank you for your support and thanks for watching.